Hi, welcome to The Peaceful Home. Today I'm bringing you a viewer question and I think it will be really helpful to talk this through. Have you ever struggled with your kids not cleaning up after themselves or as they get older, even into the teenage years, just not managing their time well, not having time to do chores or clean up before they run out the door? Stay tuned, that's our parenting topic for today. Hi, I'm Teresa Elling. I've been a parenting coach for over 20 years, and I love to help parents solve dilemmas with their children. This dilemma comes from a viewer, and she stated that her teenage son is really struggling to clean up his mess, especially, you know, making a sandwich, making something in the kitchen, and then having to run out the door. She said that he's very responsible, he has a job, but that also means time crunch, pressures, and definitely as our kids get into the teenage years, we want them to be responsible. Um, maybe driving themselves to sporting events or taking their own transportation, getting a job, as well as keeping up on schoolwork, on extracurricular things. And so they can be really busy and it can be tough to know how to train them to manage their time efficiently and not to forget to clean up after themselves. Not only are we creatures of habit, we are creatures that will take the path of least resistance. If you have not seen any of my videos on child training or negative training, I will post those below. Those will be very helpful as a backdrop to this scenario. So negative training happens when there is no negative consequence or possibly even a reward for negative behavior. Now, when that happens, we actually encourage our child to practice bad behavior. So in this situation, let's say that your son makes his lunch and then says, I don't have time to clean up, bye mom, runs out the door. You have a few choices. The most common responses I hear to this behavior are nagging, yelling, reminding, just getting frustrated, maybe calling or texting, I can't believe you left the kitchen a mess, we're gonna talk about this, and then you never talk about it. Um, you know what, if you do this again, I've had it and nothing ever happens. And when we do that, our child is allowed to continue to practice that bad behavior and there is no negative consequence. Now, some people might argue that a parent nagging or getting angry with a child is a negative consequence, but it's not really a consequence. What it does is damage your relationship. It doesn't train your child. And even though it's often subconscious, I think there are times when a child is kind of glad that they've upset their parents. If they're irritated or mad at you for any reason and they see your anger rise, that brings a, a certain amount of satisfaction that it's, it's kind of powerful that they can control, seemingly control your emotions and get you so worked up. So the key is not to allow that to happen. You have to remain even tempered and you have to let the consequence you put in place do its work. So for this situation, I would suggest that you first of all, talk to your teenager. It is so easy for us to throw out a punishment or a consequence or a threat but even if it's a direct consequence, it can feel like a punishment if it's in anger. And it can also feel like the kids don't really have a say. They're not learning to look at their behavior and change it. They're not looking at how could I manage my time better or not forget. They're just being told what to do and then told what to do, what will happen if they don't do it right. The teen years are just so crucial. You are helping them to launch out into the world and they need to know how to manage this stuff. So I would suggest sitting down and talking with your teen apart from a stressful time. Don't do this when there's already a conflict, when someone's late getting out the door. Make sure you have calm and everyone has time to chat. And then I would bring it up and just say, hey, um, Sam, you know what? We've really been struggling with you running late, leaving without completing your chores or leaving the kitchen a mess or the bathroom a mess, whatever it is. How do you think we can change this? What do you need to do to be more organized, to remember, to be on time, and then hear them out. See if you can brainstorm together and come up with some solutions. 
maybe they have never been taught before how to backtrack their time. I need to be out the door by eight. That means I need to be grabbing my backpack and all my stuff by 8.45. That means I need to brush my teeth and, you know, do whatever, do this chore by 8.30. That means I need to have my breakfast by 8.15. That means I need, you know, and just going backwards with all the things they need to do, it's very helpful to write this out. Give them a schedule in writing that they can look at and even for a brief time, actually check off each thing. And then check back in and say, is this working? Well, no, actually I gave myself 10 minutes for my shower, but I'm kind of slow and I like to take my time getting dressed. So I want 15 minutes for my shower or 20 minutes, you know, to shower and get dressed. Whatever it is, you are actually teaching them how to structure their time and how to look at it and see what's working and what's not. Now, how many of us as adults still need this? I know that um, I really got in the habit of running about 15 minutes late all the time. And I had to sit down and really look at how I was structuring my morning and that I really was not giving myself enough time for the things I needed to do. So this is an amazing skill to impart to your kids. Now, here's the thing. Once they figured out what they need to do to be on time, uh, or to remember a chore, maybe they need to set an alarm, or again, if they have a checklist, that's gonna help them go through and not forget anything. What will be the consequence if they leave a mess behind? For most of my kids, money really talks, and it worked very well in setting up boundaries, um, reward, and consequences. And the thing is, if your kid makes lunch and then darts out the door, who's gonna clean up the mess? Who's going to put away the stuff in the fridge and in the cupboard? It's probably going to be you. And so without any anger, without frustration, you're just going to be very clear. Like, I know you're learning this. I'm really proud of you. You're already showing some improvement. But if you have a lapse, you forget. You don't have time to feed the dog. You don't have time to make your bed. You don't have time to do this. This will be the consequence. So let's say it's dishes. And again, if you can't write this out clearly, it means you don't have a good plan. You need to be able to have it in writing so that it's clear to both parties. The other thing is you're dealing with a teenager and possibly one that's getting a decent allowance for their chores or working outside the home. And so don't be afraid to have a pretty good fine. And what I would do is say, okay, you know what, Sam, again, you're doing great, but if you forget, if you leave all your lunch stuff out on the counter and you don't do your breakfast dishes, I'm gonna have to do that and my, my fee is $5 or $7 or $10. You have to gauge it, make sure it's appropriate. Um, I mean, not too high, but also not too low. Now here's how you will know if you've gauged your price correctly. If your child all of a sudden doesn't care what they leave out, the chores, it's like, all right, mom, here's the money, I'll just pay you. That means you're not charging enough. Um, so be mindful of that, you might need to raise the rate. The other thing you can do is start out at, okay, it's gonna be $5 for this, or if I need to make your bed, that's gonna be three bucks or whatever it is. And the prices are going to go up every month. And so that way, they're having more time to practice, but they know that the prices are gonna get higher and higher, and so they really need to work on this. I highly encourage you to take this seriously, keep a written log of any time you have to follow up with their chores, and make sure your child pays you on the assigned day. If our children had any fines, I usually looked at that on Friday, which was payday for chores, and also if there were fines, that would be taken out. Um, if they owed me money, then they would just have to pay cash. Now, can I tell you why I think this is such an amazing plan? This gives your child freedom. They have the freedom to choose, and we don't like to admit that our children have that freedom, but they do, and we need to be aware of that. We also are giving choices. You can manage your time well, do the things you're supposed to do, or not. If not, this is the consequence. And we need to be okay with either choice. 
A favorite saying I heard a long time ago is you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, but you can make him thirsty. And that's what we do a lot of times in child training for our child's own good. Um, we can't force them. We can't make them act a certain way, but we can encourage it by putting consequences in place and by even putting rewards in place to encourage them to do a great job. And the reason this training is so crucial is that it actually can improve your relationship. You're no longer angry, yelling, nagging, threatening. That wears down on a relationship between parent and child. It causes so much turmoil and strife. And you really need to get that out of the picture. Um, I've heard parents that talk about how they want to do gentle parenting and they've chosen not to spank, but they're filled with so much anger and so much resentment. And when you're yelling at your child, that means you're not training and you're also not making their choices clear with a really good consequence for when they make a choice not to obey. A while ago, I did a video on how to help your child clean up after themselves. And I had six kids that would leave their stuff all over the place until we put this method into use and it completely changed our home. I will link that video below so you can take a look. Um, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to this channel and please hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed today's content. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Peaceful Home. God bless you in your parenting.